I'm finally getting started on that walnut tabletop that I've been putting off for about a year now and um, decided I wanted a new sander to do the finishing sander on it, sanding on the top when it's done. And I ordered one of these Makita half sheet uh, finishing sanders and I wound up having to make a punch for the sandpaper because it doesn't get come with one. And this is what it, you know, the box looks like that it came in. It's a... Um, just a standard uh, finishing sander, orbital sander type, and it's actually made in Japan. I was surprised. Uh, it says right on the box, made in Japan, so you know, hopefully that'll be a good one. This is just unpacking it, and it does come with a little plastic, well, big plastic thing there to hold the bag for the dust. Uh, one sheet of sandpaper, and there's the sander. You can see it's got a nice big flat pad that takes a half sheet of sandpaper at a time. So it'll really help me keep the uh, top nice and flat when I'm doing the final finishing. And it also came with some instructions. Um, it does have a pad that accepts Velcro sandpaper or it accepts, um, you know, it has a little locks on there to accept sheet sandpaper too, which I'll be doing because that's the cheapest. So it only came with one sheet of sandpaper, but... I figure I'm going to use this as a template to make a tool to punch sheets from now on. And actually it comes with this uh, dust collector bag that kind of sticks way off the back there. I'm kind of, jury's still kind of out on that, but I'll show you, you know, it does work in the end. So I picked through my, I got some old punches, and I picked through my old punches, and I actually found a um, punch in an har old Harbor Freight set that, punches holes the exact size that you need for the sandpaper and uh, there it is it punches it real easy and you can see perfect size now they do Makita does make a plate that you can use to just poke some holes and uh, no that came from an old Harbor Freight set I paid 99 cents for about 20 years ago but I just traced that piece of sandpaper there and got some dimensions off it drew it up and I'm gonna you know machine some parts to make a punch and, uh, you know, here we are. I decided to do it on the CNC router. Could have done it by hand, but it's more fun for me to, a little bit more of a challenge to do it this way. And, um, you know, just watch the machine work once you do get everything all programmed and stuff. But it's, uh, you know, it's a fun use for a machine like this. And I have people ask me all the time, you know, how it's been working and if there have been any problems or anything. And, uh, basically, you know, no no problems at all, and you know what you see is you know how it's been running. So I got the first piece cut. I did put some double-sided tape on there, but I really didn't need it. And just a little bit of sand and the fuzz off the edge to do on that. And then I'm going to do the second piece. And here you can hear the spindle winding up to 20,000 RPM and. Um, you know, same thing, that spindle's been running fine, uh, absolutely zero problems, the uh, Maso unit's been controlling it fine, the, you know, the speed gets set properly and everything else, so it is a, um, a great tool to have in the shop, it was worth taking a couple weeks to build. And uh, cooling through the extrusions and everything so far, everything worked out perfect, um, you know, I've got no problems with it at all, so... Just wanted to let everybody know because I keep getting questions about it. And there's the second piece, but like I said before, a lot of uh, if you Makita does make a punch plate that's got some little pins that you can just lay on the bottom and punch the sandpaper. But I wanted to make something different that you know would do it right, not just be a, um, a patch job. So there's the uh, the punch plate up on top there. Now I did have some three-quarter inch PVC left over from another job, so I made a couple pins there to lock into the bench top. I like locking stuff in the bench top. It makes it really easy to keep it from slipping around. And um, you know, I just put them in there and checked that everything lined up, and it did. So then I went back and put a little super glue to, around them to hold them in place and pounded them back in. And then I had some 10 millimeter stainless uh, pins laying around that I used to locate the top. So that just locks in the bench. And then there's two holes there that uh, line up the two plates on it. And then there's also a little lip there to put a blade on there for um, cutting the paper. 
So all the parts were made, sanded, and I decided to go back and put two coats of polyacrylic on everything. And I did put it in the, all the holes and everything else to uh, help harden them to make them last a little bit longer. Then I went up and I cut, drew up and cut up some labels on my Cameo 3, which I've shown you, you know, many times before. And just going to kind of show you how you put them on there. I, you, put, you cut the label and then you weed out the parts that you don't want. And then you put it on this clear transfer film here. And that just, you know, holds it all together while you're you're putting it on the part. And then you try to um, to get it to adhere using the, you know, I use this little spatula here. Put some pressure on there. And then you just peel off the transfer tape. Now the stuff I got has got a high tack on it. So I like to peel it over the edge of something. And here I'm just going to use this little spatula thing here and if you pull it over the edge the the sharp edges usually uh, peel right off and you know don't don't lift try to lift or anything so that makes it easier for me but um you know i just love making labels with that little cameo three and they all come out pretty much perfect so i've been happy with that and there you go you just kind of pull back that cover and that's it you know it's in place to stay and the pins are in, and I put those other stainless pins in. I actually put a little super glue on them, too, to hold them. Lines up perfect on the bench. And now I'm just waiting for... I had to order a um, a new hacksaw blade, so I didn't have a good one. So I ordered that from Amazon, and it'll be in tomorrow. This is kind of how it works. I still have to put my stop on there, but the paper gets centered between those two stainless steel pins. And then you drop the top on and you, you punch through the holes there. And here I, I took a little piece of um, plexiglass I had laying there to make the stop for it. So it would be easy to, to cut them and line them up and stuff. So I'm just going to use a couple of screws to put it in that side. And here we are next day. The Amazon just dropped off my blades. I bought the cheapest hacksaw blades I could find. And actually um, pretty nice looking blades. So I'm just going to screw them into that little lip. And I've got the rabbit there to keep them from bending or anything. So, And that should give me the exact four and a half inch cut. And fit in there nice. And you know that's pretty much the end of it. It's all done now. So this is how it works. Uh, this is a full sheet of sandpaper. You lay it in there. It gets centered between those stainless pins. Put it up against that plastic stop. Drop the top on, and then I'm just uh, going to pull it up and tear it. Now, this is a real heavy paper. This is an 80 grit. A little tough to tear, but a uh, hacksaw blade seems to do a good job. I don't know how long it'll last, but, you know, using it with the um, grit of the paper down, I think it'll last. And then it it's going to take a little time to go through and punch the holes, but, you know, they should all be lined up properly, and um, I'll probably be able to, to stack two two pieces at a time when I do it from you know in reality I figure this here is just gonna give me um, you know that just like factory paper and I won't have those uh, little tiny holes in there that will impede the dust collection so there it is first try and uh, came out pretty much perfect a little bit of a ragged edge where I cut it um, and I can see that because this is a you know 80 grit paper that's a real heavy backing and I'm just going to take the other half, and next time I'll, I'll probably just stack the two of them up and do them. And then go through, punch them, and, you know, that's it. So it looks like this is going to going to work out good. I think it'll, you know, it'll work, and it should last. Um, I'm not sure if I have to put some brass plate or something on those holes where the punch goes through, but... You know, I'll try it and see how long it lasts, but it, it does do the job right now. And here we are. I'm just going to take a little bit of a thinner paper. This is a 180 grit. I'm just going to try a piece of that. And you can see I turned it around so the hacksaw blades out. And you just pull it up on that blade, and there's a little V behind it to let it cut good. And it seems to cut the thinner paper a little better and uh, you know same thing with holes so now I'm gonna try this sander for the first time and um, you know, it was a finished sander so it 
really uh, not made to use 80 grip, but I'm going to try some of that on it first time anyway. And that little latch on it seems to work nice. Um, you do have to lay it on its side because it won't stand up upside down or anything. And that pulls in. And there are a couple little pins in there also that pu punch through the paper to hold it from slipping. So it's a really, um, really nice clamp that they have on this. And like I said, I can also use Velcro paper on here too so you don't need the clamp. So, you know, that'll be the next thing is try punching some of that. Holes line up perfect there, though, you can see. And uh, this bag is uh, still questionable, but I don't have an adapter for my vacuum that'll fit on there. It's a really tiny hose, so I'm going to have to either 3D print something or see if I can find something before I can use the vacuum on it. But in the meantime, I figured this would be a good test to try out this dust bag and see if it actually works. So I've got an old piece of cherry I just grabbed that was laying there. I'm going to just clamp this down to the bench and try the sander out. And it does it does weigh a couple pounds there. I'm going to put some marks on there just so you can see it's actually uh, removing some stock. And this is with that 80 grit that I punched on there. So one thing I noticed is um, when you use it, basically what I'm seeing is you have to run it on the highest speed. It's got a, a one through five. Um, and I'm not sure if it's just because of the coarseness of the sandpaper or what, but if you um, run it on the number five, it runs very smooth. It doesn't really pass a lot of vibration back to you, back to your hands and stuff. And it, um, the sander actually feels smooth. And it, there is a little bit of dust left on there, but the um, nothing in the air. I'm pretty surprised. That bag really seems to be doing good. So now I'm going to turn it down to slower and show you what I mean. See, it's it's very uncontrollable. If you go down to like the one, two, three, or four, the sandpaper just kind of grabs and uh, kind of tries to bounce it all over the place. So. Um, I guess with a real fine sandpaper you can run it slower or even with a buffing pad on it. But um, for, for general sanding you're going to have to run it at the highest speed. So I, I went over that with the 80 grit there. And I'm uh, going to change that out. You can see there's little pins, three little pins in the end that actually lock that paper in. So it does hold it nice and tight. Real happy with the way the clamps work on it and how they pull it in and hold it. And by, you know, having a half sheet sander here, you're going to get a real flat area when you're done, if, especially if you keep moving it nice and evenly. Um, it's just, uh, you know, it, the other, I've got the six inch disc sander and the belt sander, but they um, really can make an area dip down very easily. So, you know, this should help me with uh, getting a nice flat tabletop. And I'll, you know, we'll all see how it works out once I get the top put together. And the same thing, I'm just uh, going down to 180 grit here. And, you know, I should have gone many other grits and taken my time between. But I'm just doing a, a little test. And um, even the same thing with the 180, I noticed. If you run it on number five, it runs nice and smooth. You run it slower and it starts catching and not getting jumpy. Basically, it feels nice um, once you, you got it running at the right speed. And uh, you can see there's no dust blowing out. Uh, that dust collection seems to be working very good with the bag. I'm pretty amazed. Uh, probably I'll have to find some more of those bags because there doesn't seem to be a easy way to empty them. A little bit left on the wood, but you know that's pretty much it. And you know, same thing. I'll show you if you you know just cut down the speed, it does start bouncing. You know, in the end, it really um, you know, it looks like it's going to work out. Uh, Nice big flat pad, and the dust seems to be working perfect with those big holes poked in there. So, I'm happy so far. So let's take the bag off and look at it. And you can see there's quite a bit of dust in there. But there's no way to get it out and reuse that bag, it looks like. So, you know, I'm not sure how expensive they are, but I'm going to... You know, I'll be looking for some more bags and actually a vacuum adapter too. But just wanted to show you that this bag does actually work really good. So there it is. That's, you know, that's basically um, an overview of it. And I'll be using it in the future in the shop. And, you know, I'll give you updates as I use it. 
and making that little punch there for the paper um, really is going to be nice for the dust collection in the future. And, uh, there is some, you can see some uh, orbital marks from the 80 grit there, but uh, they're not too bad and they're not too deep. And uh, I think if you go down and sand with the right grits, they should disappear. So we'll find, you know, we'll find out um, once I start sanding on the walnut, which is pretty soft. I just wanted to share how I made this uh, little punch for it and Probably I'll be making one for the six inch disc next because it works so good. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.